I think that looks sweet. It's just still baffles me how simple this is. A bunch of you guys have asked if I could try an epoxy countertop and Stone Coat countertops sent me an entire kit, so we're gonna give it a shot. So if you guys remember, on our three levels cabinet build, I did this like cherry cabinet and I didn't do a top for it because I planned on getting a piece of stone. But that shit's expensive as hell right now and I'm not spending that kind of money on it. So to get the same look, we're gonna try one of these epoxy counters, as I said. Now, these are supposedly supposed to be really easy to do. They're supposed to be super affordable and they're basically going to be adaptable to most substrates. So we're going with an MDF top that I'm going to cut to size and we're going to do a little bit of prep on that and then we'll get the porn and see how this thing actually turns out. So I've got a piece of scrap MDF left over from some shenanigan in the last shop. I'm going to cut a little top. This thing only needs to be like 16 by 42. We'll rip it on my brand new. No, it's not new on my table saw because we still don't have the shop set up. And I think Sam actually wet himself. Don't mind that, but a few cuts and uh, we can turn this thing into, it's gonna be our countertop. If you were wondering, I am that extra that I'm using this woodpecker's corner jig to do this. So the next thing they suggest is a round over on your top, so let it rip. We got this super slick floor. <laughs> New floor, goofing. Okay, so the next thing they suggest is if you've got an edge of plywood or something like that, you can bondo it, but you wanna sand out any saw marks. So we got 220 grit on here. Next phase is what's called a base coat. Now they supply an undercoat, and this one's white, because we're going with a white Carrera kind of vibe on this mother sucker. I truly am curious to see how this goes because it's a different level of uh, resin work that we typically don't do. So I'm gonna get this thing stirred up and then rolled on. So instructions say two coats of this. Um, so I removed the lint from this roller, just like they would tell you to do. And this company, Stone Coat, has a bunch of videos. And this, this shit isn't sponsored. You guys know I love my sponsors and it's not sponsored. I'm just super curious because it's a very uh, popular product and concept, and we do a ton of epoxy, therefore, I think we should know how to do it. Right, Sam? Yeah. Who knows, maybe we'll redo the countertops that we did in my house with this. Everything is fucked. It's all a terrible idea. I don't ever want to go back in your kitchen. Wow, even if I make a delicious meal and invite you over? Well, I don't understand what that means. You, my friend, Talk are what we would call a dick. But you're right, I don't want to stand in your kitchen either. Mostly because it's time. So time. All right, so we've got two coats of the base coat on here. It's not coming off, so she dry, which means we now need to mix our epoxy. This is their art coat, which is I'm pretty sure the right product considering they sent it, but they also have some other stuff. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Hardener goes in first, so I'll do, I don't think we need a ton. Uh, hmm, I'll mix four. There's the glug. Oh, she's thick. Don't get on my boots, they're new. Need a drill. So we'll give this sucker a good stir and then we're gonna add pigment, but we're gonna separate. And then they got technique I think is called chopping. It should be pretty interesting. So we're gonna pour a little out. We don't need a ton. So the base of this is all this like, called a metallic white pigment that comes in the kit. We don't need a ton of black. So that's all that's gonna be. So get this in here. That's what it says. Something that I think is hilarious while I do this is that most of you guys think that I just know everything. Meanwhile, I probably watched eight to 12 YouTube videos just like all of you before doing this. So, we the same, we're all the same. <laughs> For once, I'm trying to be prepared here. I've got brushes, resin, I've got the scraper, and then I've got the heat gun, the blowtorch. All right, so let's pour. If I recall, we go with a white base, and we'll just start out with this in the center. And then you just want to use this to kind of spread it out. It'll self-level. Probably should level the surface if we want to self-level. The next step to eliminate all these streaks and stuff in it, you literally go and they, he calls it chopping. And you just come back in like this and 
you smooth it out. I'm s actually, you're supposed to literally pull the fibers off of this first. So do that first, and then you come back in and chop. And that's what evens the color out. All right, so I don't know how hard it is to see on camera, but it looks pretty cool. It's got some cool depth to it, and we've got some very, very bright lights in here. But the next thing is the black. So you literally just, oh, should probably try to clean that one off too. Look at that, one big one already came out. We're using like super cheap stuff here. So I think this is a $2 paintbrush. You're gonna throw these away, so don't use your good ones. Yeah, you wanna get these fibers out, and then I'll switch this. No, I won't, I'll keep this glove on. But that black pigment, supposedly what they say, just wanna get a little bit on there, get in the brush, and then you just come in and you start your start your chopping. I don't know if this has enough black in it. Maybe you wanna do one one round that way and then another round. Yeah, so you get like yeah, you're, two colors. Because you're gray, do like a, like a The point thing. is, as you like work it out, it gets lighter and lighter. What they do is you kind of just like randomly work the, work the feather in. And then you can pour veins and stuff in it. It's super subtle. I think I want to add more black. I feel like more subtle is more better. Well, you can work it out. Now we got a little more black. There we go. So that'll feather out a little better. It's super, I don't know, forgiving, I guess, is what they, what they say and you can just kind of do what you want with it. I feel like you're Bob Ross here with happy little trees. I feel happy. I'm playing in this corner over here, but I looked up and I was like, man, that actually looks pretty cool over there. So this technique, it's super interesting because it's like, we do so much epoxy where we need like absolute, you know, perfect blend of the color and stuff that it's like, I don't know, it's just super weird for me to be like doing perfectly imperfect things because that's just not how we usually roll. But I think it's pretty cool. The vein, we'll try it over here. Start it off, and you kind of just dump it through. And let it kind of do its thing. Just adds a little more darker into it. I don't know anything, but what I do know is that the heat gun supposedly what makes the game change. So we've got a heat gun, a good one here, or a decent one, that like moves, or supposedly moves the resin around. This is just popping bubbles. I mean, over here, it really does look like marble. So you can see, like, from this side, you can, like, move the color in around. You know what this reminds me of, Sam? When we did the, the waterfall table. Oh, uh, the ocean stuff? Yeah. The last thing we do is we want to hit it with a torch for a little heavier, um, a little heavier heat to get all the bubbles out. And that's it for day one, I believe. I must say, I am thoroughly impressed on how this thing is looking. Um, I kind of like the sheen that it came out with too. We've got a few things to do. We gotta sand these nubs off, which means we have to head down to the actual working part of the shop that we just upgraded. But before we do so, I wanted to remind you, if you wanna support what we're doing here, head on over to shop.johnmalecki.com, snag yourself some sweet merch. We've got some awesome new items and a new bundle for you. So head on over there, check that out now. Let's go use some tools. It just feels so good to have a shop that kind of has some power to be able to use some tools. We've got some lights. I don't know about you guys, but I am stoked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the bottom side of this with some 80 grit just to rough it off real quick. That's what they suggest. Then I will put a finish coat on top of it, I think, and we'll give this thing a final look. Power. So not per their recommendation, I'm gonna sand this thing lightly at 120 grit with a soft pad. Not 120, 220 grit. And then I'm gonna hit it with, I think some Rubio. I wanna bring the sheen down. I'd like it to be a little more matte. Hope this doesn't ruin it. I mean, shit, Sam. That looks awesome. We definitely are gonna need to wipe this thing down with some like denatured alcohol. I'm gonna break the sides by hand so I don't burn through them because they're not as thick with the resin. I think that looks sweet. I could just, it's just still baffles me how simple this is. So this is denatured alcohol. They recommend wiping it down. Something that evaporates to get the, the junk off the surface. I will say it's looking more and more like stone. The more we play with it. I don't know, Sam, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like it looks like stone, now it looks more like stone. Maybe we're stone. My stone? Definitely yeah. no, I'm sober. So we got some Rubio Mono Coat Pure. We use this on a lot of stuff. Probably my favorite finish. 
Um, and I've been using it for years. I know a lot of you guys are using it as well. I gave it a good stir. We're just gonna apply a little bit without the accelerator using a little, uh, what's this? This is their applicating pad. Uh, and just kind of smooth it on and then we'll wipe it off here in about 10, 15 minutes as it hardens. And then that'll be a wrap. I got a link down below if you guys wanna try Rubio. This is not what the manufacturer recommends. It's just a finish that I like. Low VOC, it's just awesome. It's kinda of got just a little bit more luster to it. I'm really just saying off camera. I'm like super impressed by this. It looks so much closer to like a real stone than I was ever thinking it would. I think the part that it's like completely random to, it looked completely different the next day. I don't know, Sam. What do you think? I'm thoroughly impressed. It's pretty neat. Smooth. I'm just wondering if I should uh, pour this over top of the countertops that I hate in my house. Good. And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. I think this thing turned out awesome. So awesome that I actually made another one with a little bit more color. If you wanna see that video, it's on my Facebook page. You can check it out there, I got it linked down below. If you wanna see more epoxy projects, there's a whole playlist for you right here.